So here we're going to talk about prokaryotic cells, which are very simple cells. Notice on the inside, um, not very complex structures, kind of a mess of DNA here located in the middle, no membrane-bound organelles, no high degree of organization. So these are considered very basic or primitive cells. So starting off with simple organisms, they're simple because they lack those membrane-bound organelles. No distinct internal compartments. Those are found in eukaryotic cells. So for example, a nucleus. If you see a nucleus, that's going to be a eukaryotic cell. Here are the DNA in these cells. Doesn't mean they don't contain DNA. They still do, but it's not encapsulated in a nucleus. I uh, see here it's for movement, the flagellum for locomotion, thread-like structures protruding, protruding through the cell surface. E. coli bacteria is an example of a prokaryotic cell. Magnified, um, in this case, 10,000 times, just to give an idea what they may look like. Again, basic components. Looking at defining characteristics, again, no membrane-bound organelles. you got the flagella here. This area here kind of looks like a bunch of noodles kind of condensed here. It's a nucleoid. We have our DNA basically located here. Again, no nucleus in prokaryotes. It's very simple. So where do they, um, where do they kind of compare here? Of our eukaryotes, these are more membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes are actually two categories. They're not just bacteria. We typically will associate with them as bacteria, and they are, but um, archaea is another type of prokaryotic cell, and they live in extreme habitats. Uh, example here, the kind of that yellow, Yellowstone National Park. This bright color here is because of archaea. Very stressful conditions here, and they're able to tolerate that. Um, they mean structurally similar, but biochemically different than some of the others. But bacteria and archaea both fall in there under this line of prokarya. Some comparisons. So the archaea, the bacteria, and the eukarya, we're going to kind of leave these for another section, just focusing on these two. These are both prokaryotes. Key part here for differences, I'd be looking at gene structure. They're both circular chromosomes, unlike the eukarya that contain those kind of defined organelles, which is in looking at the interior cell structure. There's no memory-bound organelles or a nucleus in both archaea and bacteria. There's several other differences, but these are kind of the main two looking at it here. Structure of bacteria, there's three basic layers. Plasma membrane is one. There'll be an extensive video on this, uh, but just know there's a plasma membrane. It's a lipid bilayer. Two layers containing lipids, which is fats, with embedded and peripheral proteins. And those form the internal pouches and allow for recogn cell recognition, for communication, for exchange of nutrients, for losing, losing of waste products. Again, this, mem this plasma membrane here, it's occurring. Also, there's a cell wall that maintains the shape of the cell and is strengthened by this thing called peptinoglycan and the glycocalus, which is basically a sugar coat. Glyco referring to like glucose and the calyx referring to just a coat. This is a layer of polysaccharides on the outer portion of the cell wall, well organized and resists removal from the capsid. So this area here is peptinoglycan. You see these kind of big um, molecule, macromolecules kind of joined together. It's an example of a structure for bacteria. Another video I have on gram, gram sanding, we'll go over some of this more. Structure of bacteria, how do we get the shape? Um, spherical shape, um, the cocci here, or coccyx, uh, bacilli, or bacillus, and spirillium here. Different types of shapes. And we can use these to help identify certain bacteria structures. The gram stain is important in helping identify, these are examples of gram stain, how we can look at the shape of different bacteria. Certain structures of the cytoplasm. Again, the cytoplasm is a semi-fluid solution. It's in the um, plasma membrane. It contains water, inner, inorganic, and organic molecules. Enzymes are located there. Again, this is a eukaryotic cell, but just to give you an idea of where it's located. Nucleoid in our prokaryotes is a region that contains a single circular DNA molecule. It's example here. So we say a circle, right? It's kind of folded on itself, so it's not a perfect circle. But if we were to kind of unfold this, it is in the circular form versus the chromosomes that would be found in eukaryotic cells. Plasmids are small accessory extra chromosomal rings of the DNA. So these are true circles. And they typically are smaller than the total bacteria DNA or genome. Again, structure of the cytoplasm here. You see where everything is located. Some certain things are labeled here. Um, again, that DNA here, kind of that circle, it is kind of folded on itself, but it is still a circle. Structure of the appendages of these prokaryotes, flagella provide the motility, 
again, they can have one flagella or many. Um, they're both serving the same purpose to be able to move the cell. Uh, the fimbriae are small bristle-like fibers that sprout from the cell surface, and the, their purpose is to enable cells to adhere to animal tissues. Different than cilia. So a lot of students confuse them with cilia. They look like these kind of protrusions here. These are specifically allowing them to adhere to animal tissues. Cilia are used for locomotion. Prokaryotes use flagella for their primary form of movement. Sex pili is another type of, of structure that's on prokaryotes, particularly bacteria. And they're these kind of structures that allow DNA to pass from cell to cell. So for example, if this plasmid is advantageous for the environment, example, it could be antibiotic resistant. So we get antibiotic resistant bacteria. Well, these bacteria can communicate. The pilus here joins the two bacteria. Our um, plasmid is replicated and it is passed through this pili. And now this other bacteria now has, for example, resistance to, bac to a certain antibiotic. So the bacteria then can proliferate and basically take over. And this is how we get the formation of antibiotic resistant bacteria. Again, just a quick overview of the cell, of a prokaryotic cell again. You can identify some of the certain parts, look at some of the certain structures, and I highly recommend you compare the prokaryotes to eukaryotes and see the similarities, but also the differences between the two.